All right, guys, so just the other day, I did a review of this product that you see on the left. It's the Kika Jet Fan 2. It's an electric uh, dusting uh, unit. So you turn it on, air blows out of it, and you can use it for multiple things. The only thing I want to use it for is to dust off lenses, eyepieces, telescope lenses, uh, camera lenses, filters, stuff like that. And then on the other side, we see that I have the Giotto um, rocket blower, which I have quite a few of the large and the small ones because I like to keep them in all different places as far as uh, cameras and lens, you know, so that I always have it at the ready. So the purpose of this video is in response to a gentleman from the uh, Astrophysics Forum uh, when I sent them a link to my video. <coughs> and um, for those that might be seeing this and don't know what the Astrophysics Forum is, it's uh, Astrophysics Incorporated. They make excellent equipment. They're out of Manchester, uh, Illinois. And I've been purchase purchasing from them for quite some time. Really like their equipment, high-end stuff. You know, I'm a very picky guy, very, very picky. So anyways, and uh, so what we've got is from this gentleman, uh, Kent Giddings, G-I-T-T-I-N-G-S, uh, November 3rd, 24. And uh, he's got, you don't really want a high-speed air duster for optics. Now, I would agree. You're not going to use your air compressor. Uh, even if you were using OSHA safety one because they're like at 30 PSI. So again, responsibility. Know what you're doing. The only thing that can really scratch optical coatings is a crystalline substance, which is commonly sand. And guess what happens when you accelerate sand to higher velocity? You want low velocity dusters, which is why Photoshop's, when they were still around, sold these um, little air bulb squeeze dusters or static camel hair uh, brushes. Now, I always use these dusters, which is what this thing is, the Gato. Now, I have, I do not like these brushes, okay? I don't use them. Years and years ago, I tried them. I don't like them. I'll use a, 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 a bulb squeeze duster before I use one of these uh, hair brushes. And you don't use canned air due to the accelerant that can get on the optics if you shake the can. This is true. This is why I never used canned air. Never. Now, this last statement I took to be a stab at me, personally. Just because someone says they have a great product doesn't mean they know anything about what they are talking about. All right, fine. I take that because I said that this was, you know, again, I'm very picky. I look at the construction of stuff. When I look at something, I want to look under the hood, per se. I thought this was well constructed. It's not made out of plastic. Uh, and so that statement, I believe, um, was directed at me. Uh, and um, so, uh, anyways, I'm a very picky person very picky. You could eat off my my car engine compartment. It turned 170,000 miles here uh, last week and um, it's probably the cleanest engine bay this side of the Mississippi if not even on the other side. So anyways, I take extreme care of things. I've got a lot of optics, tons of optics that I've gotten over the years, be it camera equipment, telescope equipment, whatever it might be. So that's why I'm going to do this little test that I thought of, and which will compare the air volume out of this to the air volume out of the Giotto, which I've used for years. And I love these, okay? But, as with anything, I don't want a car that has a carburetor. I remember when they first started talking about a car, uh, going to fuel injection. I was, oh my God, I just love carburetors. You know, every year I'd take the thing off, clean it, put it back on. Well, guess what? I wouldn't want one. Fuel injection is so much better. So uh, I'm just moving with the times from this to this, and I'll probably buy me a few more of these units. So here's the test that I've got set up, kind of rigged this up. Uh, this is something I got from a gene. I wanted a few more of these lens caps from Blue Fireball. So uh, I wanted some way to show movement of air. So 
We're going to use this thing here because you can see that it'll move around with air passing over it. I just used a small uh, spring clamp to hold it. And then to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, you'll have to forgive me. I didn't want to use a piece of steel, so I've just got this... Uh, um, Oh, what is it? It's it's uh, what you, you use like when I when I do use a slow cooker, it's chicken broth, and I'll use that uh, and I have beef broth. But anyways, this has got some weight to it, so I use that to hold it down. I didn't want to put a heavy piece of metal on on here on the wood, so we're just using that. That's the purpose of that to keep this from moving. Then what I've got rigged up here is my Mitsutoya scale. It's approximately to the end of that plastic piece, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six inches. So for the first test, we're going to use this Giotto uh, blower. This is the large one, okay, which I've used, I don't know, tons of times, tons of times. So it may be hard to see from this angle, but I'm going to look here, and we're going to go 6 inches, 4 inches, and 2 inches. So right now, I'm at, uh, move just a little bit right there. Okay, so right now I'm at about 6 inches from, from, from the tip, okay, and this has got a very small tip. So now I'm going to be about six inches away from the tip. And you'll notice when aimed at the right area how it how it moves at. Now we're going to go to four inches. And then two inches. Next, we're going to use the Kika without anything on the front. We're going to keep it slow, okay? We're going to keep it on low. We're not trying to uh, do anything else. Obviously, I'm fast. It, it, it's, you, don't, you don't want that for, for what I want to do. So, it's going to be on, on low, which is all the way down. Let me turn it on. I'll show you. If you haven't seen my first video, slow, or lo, low speed uh, volume, high speed volume. So, now we're at the low speed volume. Now I'm going to go up to 6 inches, then I'm going to go to 4 inches, then 2 inches. Next we're going to use the, uh, this, this tip. This is the largest diameter tip that comes with it. We're going to start at 6, 4, and then 2 inches. And again, on the low air volume setting. Six inches. Four inches. Two inches. Next, boys and girls, we're going to use this very uh, small tip, this pointed nozzle. Now, let me turn this thing on. Now it sounds like it's it, it's it actually sounds it sounds louder because it's probably trying to push air through there, and so at the lowest setting you can barely feel anything out of here. There is more air volume that comes out of this rocket, this Yato, than this thing. So let's go ahead, go to six inches. Now the tip is at six inches. I'm looking at it from this angle. Okay, you may not be able to tell from the camera angle, but I'm looking this way to the side, here's six inches. And I move this up and down to get the maximum movement of that uh, plastic. So at six, actually I have a little closer there. So right about there, you see there's no movement. Then we're gonna, uh, just barely, then we're gonna go to four inches. Now two inches. Okay. So let's grab this real quick and go to two inches. So there you are, guys. I'm going to go all the way up to it. So hopefully this little test will show you that this Kika has absolutely no problem dusting off um, optics at all. When the Giotto 
clearly had more air volume come out of there. And if you're worried about sand moving across the lens, uh, whatever, uh, why you got sanded, I don't know. But I guess you could get dust if you were at a beach and things were blowing up. But uh, I would have no issues using this unit here. Again, these work great, but I'd rather, this is so much easier. So, hopefully this little test shows that the safety factor, that, you know, if you're responsible, you got to be responsible in life, and you can't just do things irresponsible, and as long as you know what you're working with, and, you know, you don't go whole hog on something with just tons of air, then you're going to be fine. So... I just thought I would do this in that response, um, you know, and then somebody else made a comment about cost, uh, that you can get them cheaper. You know what I found out in life? You get what you pay for. And you can buy cheaper telescopes and you get what you pay for. I don't worry about when it comes to money. If I want it, I'm going to buy it. I always want quality because I found out years and years ago, if you buy something that you don't like, now you're stuck with it. You should have just went ahead and bought you know, so I thought the price is very reasonable. And, um, but anyways, hopefully this test, <coughs> excuse me, will show people that if you're going to use this on optics, it's very safe, very safe.